Hey guys, we're in Jeremiah 38 in the contemporary English version. And oh, if um, anyone in Texas still needs um, their pipes fixed or whatever, or plumbing issues, my uncle is going to drive here from Phoenix on uh, Phoenix, Arizona on Monday. And, um, and so let me know if there's anyone who still needs their pipes fixed and their, his company's name is called Two Sons Plumbing and, and his name is Brad Mercer, my uncle. And um, his phone number is 623-200-2812 if you guys want to um, hire him. He's really good and you can go and look at reviews and stuff like that. Okay. Okay. Oh my gosh. I was playing Pinochle online today and... I cannot believe how mean and rude and ruthless people are. And it's like an older school kind of game. And these people are older than me. And they're saying things that I can't even believe. And I was like shocked. I'm not surprised that kids today hurt themselves or have issues. It's so sad. Like, it was so sad. Okay, anyway, let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, may your blessings of peace and love and joy be upon everyone who watches these videos. And please help us understand the wisdom and knowledge that we retain today, Lord. And please remind people that they don't need to be mean. Like, I don't know, Lord. The internet's cool to spread good news, but it's also used for, uh, I can't even, I don't even know what to ask for, Lord, but um, I love you. We love you. We give you glory, Lord, and we're sorry when we sin. Please forgive us, Lord, and thank you for dying on the cross for our sins, Lord, so that we don't have to. And we pray and ask these things in your name, Jesus. So be it. Amen. Okay. Okay. Chapter 38, Jeremiah 38. Jeremiah is held prisoner in a dry well. One day, Shepatiah son of Matin, Gedaliah, son of Pasher, Jekyll, son of Shalemiah, and Pasher, son of Malchiah, um, heard me tell the people of Judah that the Lord had said, if you stay here in Jerusalem, you'll die in battle or from disease or hunger, and the Babylonian army will capture the city anyway. But if you surrender to the Babylonians, they will let you live. So the four of them went to the king and said, You should put Jeremiah to death because he's making the soldiers and everyone else lose hope. He isn't trying to help our people. He's trying to harm them. Zedekiah replied, Do what you want with him. I can't stop you. Then they took me back to the courtyard of the palace guards and let me down with ropes into the well that belonged to to Malchiah, the king's son. There was no water in the well, but I sank down in the mud. Abed-Malek, Abed -Malek from Ethiopia, or Cush, a region south of Egypt that includes parts of the present day countries of Ethiopia and Sudan. We've already read that a million times. Okay. Abed-Malak from Ethiopia was an official at the palace and he heard what they had done to me. So he went to speak with King Zedekiah who was holding court at Benjamin Gate. Abed-Malak said, Your Majesty, Jeremiah is a prophet and those men were wrong to throw him into a well. And when Jerusalem runs out of food, Jeremiah will starve to death down there. Zedekiah answered, 
take 30 or possibly three of my soldiers and pull Jeremiah out before he dies. Abedmelech and the soldiers went to the palace and got some rags from the room under the treasury. He used ropes to lower them into the well. Then he said, put these rags under your arm so the ropes won't hurt you. After I did, the men pulled me out. And from then on, I was kept in the courtyard of the palace guards. King Zedekiah questions Jeremiah. King Zedekiah had me brought to his private entrance to the temple and he said, I'm going to ask you something and I want to know the truth. Why? I replied, you won't listen and you might even have me killed. He said, I swear in the name of the living Lord, our creator, that I won't have you killed. No one else can hear what we say and I won't let anyone kill you. Then I told them that the Lord had said, Zedekiah, I am the Lord God all-powerful, the God of Israel. I promise that if you surrender to King Nebuchadnezzar's officers, you and your family won't be killed and Jerusalem won't be burned down. But if you don't surrender, I will let the Babylonian army capture Jerusalem and burn it down and you will be taken prisoner. <laughs> No barking. Okay, Zedekiah answered, verse 19, I can't surrender the, to the Babylonians. I'm too afraid of the people of Judah who have already joined them. The Babylonians might hand me over to them and they would torture me. I said, if you will just obey the Lord, the Babylonians won't hand you over to those Jews. You'll be allowed to live and all will go well for you. But the Lord has shown me that if you refuse to obey, then the woman of your palace will be taken prisoner by Nebuchadnezzar's officials. And those woman, women will say to you, friends you trusted led you astray. Now you're trapped in mud and those friends you trusted have all turned away. The Babylonian army will take your wives and children captive. You will be taken as a prisoner to the king of Babylonia and Jerusalem will be burned down or you will burn Jerusalem down, or he will burn Jerusalem down. Zedekiah said, Jeremiah, if you tell anyone what we've talked about, you might lose your life. And I'm sure that if my officials hear about our meeting, they will ask you what we said to each other. They might even threaten to kill you if you don't tell them. So if they question you, tell them you were begging me not to send you back to the prison at Jonathan's house because going back there would kill you. The officials did come and question me about my meeting with the king, and I told them exactly what he had ordered me to say. They never spoke to me about the meeting again since no one had heard us talking. I was held in the courtyard of the palace guards until the day Jerusalem was captured. Okay, chapter 39. Jerusalem is captured by the Babylonians. Dude, look at all these notes. Okay, I'll just open them as we go. Okay, verse 1. In the tenth month, Tebeth, of the ninth year that Zedekiah was king of Judah, King Nebuchadnezzar and the Babylonian army began their attack on Jerusalem. They kept the city surrounded for a year and a half. Then on the ninth day of the fourth month, Tammuz, of the eleventh year that Zedekiah was king, they broke through the city walls. After Jerusalem was captured, Nebuchadnezzar's highest officials... The Hebrew text gives Nergal Sherezer's title as the Rab Mag and Nebo Sarsikam's title as the 
the Rabsaras, but the exact meaning of the titles and the duties of these offices are not known. Okay, so... Uh, okay, so after Jerusalem was captured, Nebuchadnezzar's highest officials, including Nebo Sarsikam and Nergal Sherazar from Semagur, probably Nebuchadnezzar's son-in-law, who ruled, who was king of Babylonia from 560 to 556 BC, took their places at Middlegate to show they were in control of the city. The rulers and leaders often sat in a broad open area at the gate of a city to take care of official business and hold trials. When King Zedekiah and his troops saw that Jerusalem had been captured, they tried to escape from the city that same night. They went to the garden's garden or the king's garden where they slipped through the gate between the two city walls and headed toward the Jordan River Valley. But the Babylonian troops caught up with them near Jericho. They arrested Zedekiah and took him to the town of Riblah in the land of Hamath, where Nebuchadnezzar put him on trial, then found him guilty and gave orders for him to be punished. Zedekiah's sons were killed there in front of him, and so were the leaders of Judah's ruling families. Then his eyes were poked out and he was put in chains so he could be dragged off to Babylonia. Meanwhile, the Babylonian army had burned the houses in Jerusalem, including the temple and the royal palace, and they had broken down the city walls. Nebuzaradan, the Babylonian officer in charge of the guards, led away everyone from the city as prisoners, even those who had deserted to Nebuchadnezzar. Only the poorest people who owned no land were left behind in Judah, and Nebuzaradan gave them fields and vineyards. Nebuchadnezzar had given the following orders to Nebuzaradan. Find Jeremiah and keep him safe. Take good care of him and do whatever he asks. Nebuzaradan, Nebuchadnezzar, Nergal, Sherezer. <laughs> And the other officers of King Nebuchadnezzar sent some of their troops to bring me from the courtyard of the royal palace guards. They put me in the care of Gadaliah, son of Ahikam, and grandson of Shaphan, and told him to take me to my home. And so I was allowed to stay with the people who remained in Judah. The Lord promises to protect Abedmelech. While I was prisoner in the courtyard of the palace guard, the Lord told me to say to Abedmelech from Ethiopia, I am the Lord all-powerful, the God of Israel. I warned everyone that I would bring disaster, not prosperity, to this city. Now very soon I will do what I said and you will see it happen. But because you trusted me, where Abedmelech helped Jeremiah, I will protect you from the officials of Judah, and when Judah is struck by disaster, I will rescue you and keep you alive. I, the Lord, have spoken. Okay, chapter 40, Jeremiah is set free. I was led away in chains along with the people of Judah and Jerusalem who were being taken to Babylonia. Nebuz Zardan was the officer in charge of the guard, and while we were stopped at Rama, the Lord caused him to set me free. Nebuzaradan said, Jeremiah, the Lord your God, warned your people that he would bring disaster on this land, but they continued to rebel against him, and now he has punished them just as he threatened. Today I'm taking the chains off your wrists and setting you free. If you want to, you can come with me to Babylonia and I will see that you are taken care of. Or if you decide to stay here, you can go wherever you wish. King Nebuchadnezzar has chosen Gedaliah to rule Judah. You can live near Gedaliah and he will provide for you, or you can live anywhere else you choose. Nebuzaradan gave me a supply of food, then let me leave. I decided to stay with the people of Judah and I went to live near Gedaliah in Mizpah. The harvest is brought in. Ishmael, the son of Nethaniah, together with Jehonan and Jonathan, the two sons of Korea, had been officers in Judah's army. And so had Sariah, the son of Tanhumath, the sons of Ephi, the 
Netophathai, and Jezaniah from Maka. They and their troops had been stationed outside Jerusalem and had not been captured. They heard that Gedaliah had been chosen to rule Judah and that the poorest men, women, and children had not been taken away to Babylonia. So they went to Mizpah and met with their new ruler. Gedaliah told them, There's no need to be afraid of the Babylonians. Everything will be fine if we live peacefully and obey King Nebuchadnezzar. I will stay here at Mizpah and meet with the Babylonian officials on each of their visits. But you must go back to your towns and bring in the harvest, then store the wine, olive oil, and dried fruit. Earlier, when the Babylonians had invaded Judah, many of the Jews escaped to Moab, Ammon, Edom, and several other countries. But these Jews heard that the king of Babylonia had appointed Gedaliah as ruler of Judah, and that only a few people were left there. So the Jews in these other countries came back to Judah and helped with the grape and fruit harvest, which was especially large that year. Gedaliah is murdered. One day, Johanan got together with some of the other men who had been army officers, and they came to Mizpah to meet with Gedaliah. They said, Gedaliah, we came to warn you that King Valus of Ammon hired Ishmael to murder you. Gedaliah refused to believe them, so Johanan went to Gedaliah privately and said, Let me kill Ishmael. No one will find out who did it. There are only a few people left in Judah, but they're depending on you, and if you're murdered, they will be scattered or killed. Gedaliah answered, don't kill Ishmael. What you've said about him can't be true. Okay, chapter 41. But in the seventh month, Tishri, Ishmael, son of Nethaniah and grandson of Elishama, came to Mizpah with ten of his soldiers. He had been one of the king's officials and was a member of the royal family. Ishmael and his men were invited to eat with Gedaliah. During the meal, Ishmael and his soldiers killed Gedaliah, the man chosen as ruler of Judah by the king of Babylonia. Then they killed the Jews who were, were with Gedaliah, and they also killed the Babylonian soldiers who were there. The next day, the murders had still not been discovered when 80 men came down the road toward Mizpah from the towns of Shechem, Shiloh, and Samaria. They were on their way to the temple to offer gifts of grain and incense to the Lord. They'd shaved off their head, off their beards, torn their clothes, and cut themselves because they were mourning. Ishmael went out the town gate to meet them. He pretended to be weeping, and he asked them to come into Mizpah to meet with Gedaliah, the ruler of Judah. But after they were inside the town, Ishmael ordered his soldiers to kill them and throw their bodies into a well. He let ten of the men live because they offered to give him supplies of wheat, barley, olive oil, and honey they had hidden in a field. Then, or sorry, the well that he filled with bodies of those kills, killed by Gedaliah had been dug by King Asa, who ruled 911 to 870 BC of Judah to store rainwater because he was afraid that King Basha, who ruled from 909 to 886 BC of Israel, might surround Mizpah and keep the people from getting to their water supply. Nebuzaradan, King Nebuchadnezzar's officer in charge of the guard, had left King Zedekiah's daughters and many other people at Mizpah, and he put Gedaliah in charge of them. But now Ishmael took them all prisoner and led them toward Ammon on the other side of the Jordan River. Johanan and the other army officers heard what Ishmael had done, so they and their troops chased Ishmael and caught up with him at the large pit at Gibeon. When Ishmael's prisoners saw Johanan and the officers, they were happy and turned around and ran toward Johanan. But Ishmael and eight of his men escaped and went to Ammon. Johanan decides to take the people to Egypt. Johanna and the officers had rescued the women, children, and royal officials that Ishmael had taken prisoner after killing Gedaliah. Johanna led the people from Gibeon toward Egypt. They wanted to go there because they were afraid of what the Babylonians would do when they found out that Ishmael had killed Gedaliah, the ruler appointed by King Nebuchadnezzar. The people asked Jeremiah to pray for them. On the way to Egypt, we... 
A group of people included Jeremiah since he had been staying with Gedaliah near Mizpah. We stopped at the town of Gareth Chimham near Bethlehem. Okay, chapter 42. Johanan Jezaniah, son of Hoshea, or Azariah, son of Hoshea, the other army officers and everyone else in the group came to me and said, Please, Jeremiah, pray to the Lord your God for us. Judy used to have many people, but as you can see, only a few of us are left. Ask the Lord to tell us where he wants us to go and what he wants us to do. All right, I answered. I'll pray to the Lord your God, and I will tell you everything he says. They answered, the Lord himself will, will be our witness that we promise to do whatever he says, even if it isn't what we want to do. We will obey the Lord so that all will go well for us. Ten days later, the Lord gave me an answer for Johanan, the officers, and the other people. So I called them together and told them that the Lord God of Israel had said, you asked Jeremiah to pray and find out what you should do. I'm sorry that I had to punish you. And so I now tell you to stay here in Judah where I will plant you and build you up instead of tearing you down and uprooting you. Don't be afraid of the king of Babylonia. I will protect you from him and I will even force him to have mercy on you and give back your farms. But you might keep on saying, we won't stay here in Judah and we won't obey the Lord our God. We're going to Egypt where there's plenty of food and no danger of war. Seems like that would be my last choice destination if I was an Israelite. Maybe. <laughs> Hi, Toby. People of, okay, verse 15. People of Judah, you survived when the Babylonian army attacked. Now you are planning to move to Egypt, and if you do go, this is what will happen. You're afraid of war, starvation, and disease here in Judah, but they will follow you to Egypt and kill you there. None of you will survive the disasters I will send. I, the Lord, was angry with the people of Jerusalem and punished them. And if you go to Egypt, I'll be angry and punish you the same way. You'll never again see your homeland. People will be horrified at what I do to you, and they will use the name of your city as a curse word. Jeremiah gives a warning. I told the people, you escaped the disaster that struck Judah, but now the Lord warns you to stay away from Egypt. You asked me to pray and find out what the Lord our God wants you to do, and you promised to obey him. But that was a terrible mistake, because now that I have given you the Lord's answer, you refuse to obey him. And so you will die in Egypt from war, hunger, and disease. Okay, let's leave it there for now. I can't even imagine what it would have been like to live back then. Okay, let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we love you so much and... Thank you that we can always trust you when we need your help, Lord. And thank you for giving us 84 trillion chances. And I don't understand your love, Lord. It's so beyond me. But I'm very grateful for it, Lord. And I we're grateful for you and all the blessings that you bestow on us and all the different ways you help us, Lord. We love you so much. We pray and ask these things in Jesus' name. So be it. Amen. Okay, God bless. I love you.